Hello, and welcome to another iClone 7 Academy tutorial. Today's topic will be modifying baked physics animation with a curve editor. Now, you can find all of these props here inside your default prop settings and folder. And if you go to physics props, rigid bodies, you can find the box and the barrel if you want, if you want to follow along and uh, try to do it yourself. And the floor is, I just used the uh, shadow catcher and I just basically gave it, gave it a few properties down in physics, like so. I basically took the friction down and uh, up because it was sliding too much and uh, a little bit of elasticity to the floor from the default. So um, those are the, the parameters I used for the floor, just in case you were you were curious about. I also changed a little bit the physics parameters for the box and um, uh, mass is three, friction 50 and elasticity 50. All right, so, so how do we modify baked physics? All right, or how do you bake physics in case you didn't know? Well, we'll show you right here. All I'm gonna do right now is uh, just so you know is the box is set to dynamic the barrel is set to static and the floor also is set to static okay so that's uh, pretty basic so basically the only thing that's going to be moving around is the box so let's select the box and I'm going to press control 3 because I'm going to go to my animation um, workspace by the way if you don't know how to do that you press control 3 or you go to windows workspace control 3 and now I'm going to make sure this is set to loop. So, and I'm going to make this disappear so we have a little bit more real estate. And all I'm going to do now, now is just uh, basically let it rip. So it's going to do the physics thing. And it stopped about there. So I'm going to stop there as well. And I'm going to bring the end bookmark here. So that actually ends there. So we can have a nice little loop when we play through. Now one thing is after you run it the first time. Make sure that you deactivate the physics from the box and you turn physics off because right now the physics are already baked now if we go to the beginning you can see this happening right now so it will keep on looping like that so good we have what we want next uh, in order for us to compare before and after what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the box make sure frame one and then I am going to press W and I press control and I'm going to click drag so we have a duplicate of the same box and when you duplicate that you also get the same motion so this will be our reference all right next let's select the original box here notice one is called carbo box and the other one is called carbo box zero so so you know which one is which and now what i'm going to do is i am going to open up the animation track because that's where all the um, physics um, information is at, right here. And what I'm going to do here is, now that that's baked, I am going to go ahead and turn that into keyframes. To do so, you right click on the clip and go sample animation clip. This will create the keyframes for us, like so. Notice nothing's changed, everything is, is exactly the same. All right, so here's the benefits of having the curve editor. However, there are a few things you can do inside the timeline. Uh, for example, if you want to speed up the first part of the falling animation, you could literally just go to the point where it does contact with the barrel and then break it at that point, and then you can speed up the beginning part. However, there are a few things that you can do with the curve editors you won't be able to do with the timeline, which is actually truly modify that curve and uh, of acceleration. And this is what I'm gonna show you guys now uh, for those that do have the curve editor, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, take this information we just sampled and let's take it into the curve editor. To do so, you right click on it, go curve editor, curve editor. This will open up uh, the curve editor for us and it will uh, put us, show us the, 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 the position curves uh, for the object. Now I'm going to do a frame by clicking on this icon over here, like so. All right. And uh, the first thing we want to target is the speed in which the box is falling. Because right now it's a little floaty, right? So we want this to happen a lot faster. 
So we're going to go again to the point of contact. So to do so, let's make sure we can have a better view here. So, and now by moving the time slider here or moving the, using the left or right arrow keys, you can scroll back and forth in time. And at this point, this is where I want uh, my motion to get accelerated from this point on. So what we want is the first part to be accelerated, the rest to stay the same. So I've selected those keys and I'm gonna go up, um, press uh, uh, this icon again to frame those keys in there. And what I'm going to do is I am going to scale this and I'll make sure that uh, I have all my uh, rotation, position and scale selected here because it looks like that rotation in C got deselected, in Z got deselected. So I want to make sure I select all of those frames in there. So again, I'm going to click drag to select these frames up front. We're going to frame in there. All right. And next, what we're going to do is first, we're going to optimize this. Optimize is a great way to take some keyframes that are not needed. And also, uh, it makes the file smaller. So let's do that. Notice we end up with a few less curves, a few less keyframes in there. But the motion is still the same. Nothing changed. So we're good. And now what we're going to do is, again, we are going to go to the point of contact. And I am going to scale that smaller. And to do so, there is a function. I'm going to select the keys first. So from here on, let's select whatever keys are there. And now I'm going to, there is a scale function here, this icon right here, scale keys. And now I'm going to go from the front to the, I'm going to push them closer to the back so because I don't want this part to move at all so this allows it to scale from one side to the other whereas it would be a lot harder to do in the timeline to do the scale in in the inverse here okay so we have the scale in here and what's going to happen basically is it's going to it's going to be pausing at the beginning because there are no keyframes until it hits frame, frame uh, 12 or 13, I can't, I'm not sure. Let me just find out. So that's frame right there, frame 13. So what we want to do now is we want to select all the curves. I'm going to press M first to uh, and click on an empty area to deselect those keys. And now I'm going to go ahead and select the curves. And by selecting the curves, you are selecting all the keys on all those curves. And uh, now I'm going to go and press the shift and I'm going to move all those keys to frame one. So now, as you notice, you have a faster acceleration. So it looks less floaty and looks a little bit more realistic that way. So again, once you baked something, sometimes you have to rebake and rebake over and over. This allows you basically to, to uh, not have to do so much baking and, uh, and tweaking things a little faster. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select my position for Z or my Z axis because this is the one we're going to be working with because we're going to fine tune that acceleration even further. Notice here that the curve goes a little bit too straight, so it leaves the box hanging a little too much. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and pull this, the curve through the, uh, the handle of the key a little bit down. And I am going to select this and make the acceleration a little bit sharper. So there you go. Fine tuning the motions. Beautiful thing. All right. That looks pretty good. And it looks a little more realistic. This one feels like very, very floaty. So the other thing I, I didn't like about the simulation is it's sliding too much. I could have gone back and adjust the fr friction for the box and the floor. To, to see until I get something that I want, or you can go ahead and modify actually uh, the curve. So in here, I know that this is sliding on the X direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the X position here for the axis, and I'm gonna frame in there and see where the sliding is happening towards the end. So at this point here is we have this very, very long, long curve uh, uh, deceleration it is decelerating but it's sliding way way too much to the side 
Now this floor looks pretty rough, so it would slide a lot less to me. So what I'm going to do is at the point which stops bouncing, there, about there, here, let's see, there. I am going to go ahead and select these keys like that. And I am going to use the scale again. And you will notice that I'm going to, I'm going to go, instead of going from, from down to up, I'm going to go, go from uh, up to down. So basically we are reducing the length on in, in X, which is what we want. So let's go ahead and scale that down like so. So this will give us doing this. And now I'm going to go ahead and frame that in. This will give us a shorter spam, uh, a span on the sliding on X. So if I play it now, notice that it's not translating as much anymore. However, you'll notice that when you scale, uh, there's a little bug right now that uh, unfortunately uh, it makes the uh, it, that it scales the keyframes, but it does not scale the uh, the uh, the manipulators or the the handles on the curves. So you get a little bit of extra wobble that you don't noise that you don't want in here on the curve itself. I'm gonna press M here. See all this little weirdness on the curve. So basically, what you can do is you can select these guys over here, and uh, by uh, uh, control selecting it, so you select both of those, and you can smooth those out like so. All right, so like that, that will fix that problem right there. And now, or you you know, if you see something that, for example, this one, we could technically remove it. And this guy over here as well. Like that. So this will give us a sharper slowdown. And not a bit and not as much of a slide. So see this one looks like it's it's like an air hockey table. Slides a little too much. This one, the friction looks just right. Again, you can con totally control this, or you can actually just move the, the, the keys. So you can actually control that as well by pressing shift and down, up and down. You can control that. Just make sure that you adjust the, the tension of the curves as well. So that you get a nice smooth deceleration there. Like so. All right. And that's the end of the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you on the next one. Until then, take care.